Ezra 9 and 5 of the Apocrypha books of the Holy Scriptures and it reads, For like all that is made in the world and had a beginning and an end is manifest, right? And it's being manifest of these uh, prophecies. That's about to be fulfilled, right? So, hey, uh, the, uh, the manifesting of these uh, global events, major events, uh, increasing manifesting of biblical signs, uh, manifesting of the signs of times and what time that we are in. And this is the book of Ecclesiastes, third chapter, verse one. It says, "To everything there is a season, and to every purpose under the heaven, right? To every, uh, to every season there is a purpose under the uh, purpose under the heaven. You can uh, trace that back to during those times, now in modern day times as well, too." Uh, what seasons that we are in, you know. Uh, verse 2, Ecclesiastes 3 and 2, a time to be born, and a time to be I eat, and a time to plant up, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Ecclesiastes 3 and 3, and the Holy Scriptures, and it reads, and a time to K-I-L, and a time to heal, and a time to break down, and a time to build up. Ecclesiastes 3 and 4, and a time to reap, and a time to laugh, and a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Ecclesiastes 3 and 5, and it reads the Holy Scriptures. And a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, and a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. Ecclesiastes 3 and 6, and reads through the Holy Scriptures. And a time to get, and a time to keep, and a time to lose, and a time uh, to cast away. Verse 7, Ecclesiastes 3 and 7, and reads through the Holy Scriptures. And a time to rent, and a time to sow, and a time to keep silent, and a time to speak. Ecclesiastes 3 and 8. Uh, Ecclesiastes 3 and 8, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. And a time to love, and a time to H A T E, and a time of war, and a time of peace. Right, so we are in those times. It's like Jeremiah 28 and 8, a, uh, where the prophets of old prophesied against uh, uh, wars, evils, and the pestilence. Just like we are back on the scene today in modern day times, prophesying about wars, evils, and the pestilence, because we are in those times. These are the signs of the times that we are in. And we're going to continue to witness that and, and see forth and manifest of that in the latter days as well, too, because these are the times that we are in, you know. I'm going to go to Matthews 24, uh, 6. And this is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 6. It reads the Holy Scripture. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Right. But the end is not yet. It's going to continue to increase and show forth in the latter days as well, too. Of these uh, wars and rumors of wars uh, heating up between the different nations and different kingdoms, you know. That's why we're seeing uh, the situations over there with the Russian Korean situation heating up. That's why we're seeing over there uh, Israel Palestine situation continuing to heat up. That's why we're seeing escalations over there in, uh, in the Middle East, a cross border conflict between those nations and different kingdoms, you know. A lot of increasing uh, wars and commotions, a lot of increasing non stop escalations of uh, wars and commotions between different nations and different kingdoms. Those are prime examples of wars and rumors of wars heating up. I'm going to the next verse. This is uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 7, and it reads the Holy Scriptures. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Watch the right, that's what we're seeing. Nation shall rise against nation, and that's what we're seeing around the world. And we're going to continue to see that increase uh, now so more than ever. Even though we are so used to and, and to customs of that, but we're going to continue to see that at an increasing alarming rate, you know. That's why we're seeing these different nations and these different armies. Uh, having this uh, nuclear escalations, nuclear seditions, nuclear uprisings between uh, one another, you know. And I'm going to read again, Matthew 24 and 7, and it reads to the Holy Scriptures. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Right, earthquakes in diverse places, we're going to see that increase as well, too. And the uh, pestilence and plagues, and you read that in 2nd Ezra 15 and 5, of your Abba Shai, going to send the uh, plagues on the, uh, on the whole earth. Uh, he gonna send the uh, sword, famine, death, and destruction as well too. You know, and those are prime examples. You know? And this is uh, it's a lot here. Uh, forgive me for that. We go to the next verse. This is Matthew 24 and 8, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. And all these are the beginning of sorrow, right? Because these are the increasing beginning. You know, these are the increasing beginning uh, stages of uh, sorrows that we are gonna witness and experience and see in a lot of days. You know. Uh, Salakia for that right so we're going to uh, continue to see that increase of the uh, nations rising up against nations 
earthquakes in diverse places, tornadoes, landslides, mudslides, heavy floodings, you know, seditions, uprises, uproars in the people in the world. Hey, we're gonna see that increase and in take full effect on the planet Earth, you know? Because these are increasing of the uh, signs of the times, uh, what times that we are living in, you know? That's why we're uh, measuring the time diligently in itself. Uh, my apology for that, Salakia. Right, because these are the, uh, we are already in the stages of uh, beginning of those sorrows. It's going to increase and show forth uh, now so more than ever. You know? <coughs> That's why we are measuring the time diligently. Hey, we're being on our watch, as being watchmen unto the house of Israel, you know. We're sounding your alarm, we're blowing the trumpet in Zion in a lot of days, you know, because we are in those times. Hey, it's going to increase and show forth, and it's going to manifest now so more than ever, you know, because we are directly, increasingly are in those times, you know. <coughs> Matthews 24 and 8, and I'm going to read it again from the Holy Scriptures. All of these are the beginning of sorrows, right? All of these are the beginning of sorrows in many different uh, stages and categories of events and signs, uh, major events, global events. Hey, these are going to increase because we are in those times of beginning of increasing sorrows. You know? I'm going uh, to bring out that Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 7 as well too. Because we got, we're definitely going to continue to see the... Uh, you know, the, uh, the increasing decline of the version of Babylon in modern day times. It's like ancient Babylon now in modern day Babylon. We're going to continue to see the decline. Uh, Jeremiah 51 and 7, and it reads in the Holy Scriptures. Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken the wine of her. Therefore, the nations are mad. Right. So, therefore, the nations are angry and mad at the version of Babylon at an increasing alarming rate. That's why the nation's been turning away from the American dollar. That's why they've been turning away from the influence uh, of other categories of ways of influence uh, Babylon had towards towards these other nations of, of, of great confusion and, and evilness and wickedness and unrighteousness and unrighteous decrees as well too, you know? That's why the nations are have turned away from that. But they, they have drunk it on the ways of Babylon, you know, and they're not hip to that. That's why the nations are continually increasingly angry at the version of Babylon from an economical sense and many different uh, categories sense as well, too. So the nations have drunk up the ways of Babylon. They are not hip to that no more. That's why the nations are angry at man at the version of Babylon. Even their own allies as well, too, from an economical sense, from a military security uh, cooperation stable sense as well, too, or many other different aspects of that as well, too. So the nations been, their allies been pulling away from that definitely from an economical sense. That's why you're seeing the nation's been turning away from the American dollar. Uh, the American dollar. That's why we're seeing the American dollar has been on, on, on the decline for the first ever time in uh, 25 years, you know. And we're going to continue to see it on the downfall, even though it has increasing value right now. But you're going to have uh, other nation that's going to be a top global currency reserve, either that's going to be China or Russia, most likely China, you know. Because, you know, these nations have been turning away from the American dollar. They've been ditching the American dollar, you know. And that shows it says that the version of Babylon is on the decline. It's going to continue to be on the decline. And we definitely see an increase in signs of that. Why you see the mineral lore out here on the highways and byways of where we've been scattered at over here in Babylon, prophesying against this kingdom, prophesying against these other nations as well, too, of their kings. But mostly, definitely for sure, of the kings, of modern day kings of Babylon, of the influence they have around these different European countries and over here as well, too. So we definitely see an increase, increasing directly signs that, hey, that the kingdom, the kingdoms of the influence of Babylon is going to continue to uh, collapse, it's going to continue to decline. And more, we're going to see more and more and more in these nations going against this uh, kingdom as well, too. Uh, now, so more than ever, you know. Uh, continuing on, I'm going to read verse 8. I mean, Jeremiah 51 and 8, my apologies. And this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 8. And it reads through the Holy Scripture. It says, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her take bond for her pain, if so she may be healed. Right. Take bond for her pain, if so she may be healed. So there's no healing for the virgin God of Babylon. And we're going to continue to see uh, the decline of this uh, kingdom. Now so more than ever. Because we are in those times of uh, this kingdom is definitely going to continue to be on the decline now so more than ever. And the 
more we prophesy against this kingdom, the more the results of its sin is crumbling on the decline. If we see more of these nations turn against this kingdom, definitely from an economical sense, you know, and the westernization sense and many other different category senses as well too, like I mentioned again, they want to see this uh, kingdom uh, crumble. Even though it might look like it's, it's still showing prosperity in this uh, kingdom, uh, everybody's still uh, trying to live their life, and, you know, live their life like it's last, like it's their last, like it's their last breath and stuff like that. The mix, the mix, the uh, mi mixing, melting pot and all that, all that stuff, you know, and, as and et cetera. But we're still going to see increase the signs of this kingdom is going to continue to grow. And the nations are going to continue to go against this nation as well, too, of this great kingdom, which is the modern day virgin out of Babylon and modern day Egypt as well, too. And the men of the world are going to continue to prophesy against this kingdom. You know, wherever we've been scattered, you know, especially over here in Babylon, hey, we're going to continue to prophesy against this place about the evils and the pestilence and the seditions and the uprisings and the spirits created for vengeance and all many different categories and aspects of the fall of this great kingdom. You're going to see that increase now so more than ever, you know. And this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 9, and it reads the Holy Scriptures. We will have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. It says, forsake of her and let us everyone go to his own country for her judgments reach unto heaven and is lifted up even to the sky. Right, so we would have healed Babylon which cannot be healed. Hey, there's no continually, there's no healing for uh, Babylon. We're gonna continue to see uh, this kingdom on a down, uh, downfall or decline on this last rulership now some more than ever. We're seeing increasing signs of that, you know. I'm gonna go to Revelations 18 and 1 as usual. And this is uh, Revelation chapter 18 and verse 1 in the grace to the Holy Scriptures. It says, uh, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightning with his glory. Uh, Revelation 18 and 2 in the grace to the Holy Scriptures. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, is come a habitation of the seers, and a hold of every vile spirit, and a cage of every unclean, the H A T E F U L bird. Right, we're going to continue to see that, you know. Hey, we're going to continue to see the uh, aftermath, I mean the after effects and the effects of a uh, version out of Babylon is going to continue to be on the decline. Hey, Babylon is falling, Babylon is falling. Hey, modern day version out of Babylon spiritually, modern day times is going to continue to fall, it's falling, it's falling. Now so more than that, you know, because we are in those times. You know, we are in those times of, of this direct consistency of increasing of the version out of Babylon is going to consistently be on, on the downfall. I mean, on the downfall, uh, on the decline, uh, of, of the increasing decline now, so more than ever, you know, in many different aspects of categories, uh, from a category, kind of, kind of, category sense of uh, these, uh, of this continuous of uh, the other downfall, you know. And I'm going to read again, this is Revelation chapter 18, verse 2, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures, uh, Revelation 18 and 2. And he cried, my to me with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, and is becoming habitations of the seniors, and a hold of every vile spirit. Right, every hold of every vile spirit. You know, because uh, evil is in you know, lawlessness, and iniquity has been increasing and lifted up into the heavens of the first God of Babylon. Uh, now some more than ever, you know. It says, and a hold of every spirit, and every hold of every vile spirit, and a cage of every unclean, and H A T E F U L bird, right? Because of seditions and iniquities and evilness and lawlessness has been increasing in this place, you know. And it's going to continue to ramp up and increase because the sins, because the sin, sins of Babylon have been reached up into the heavens and it's going to lift up into the sky. And it's going to continue to increase that way, you know. That's why we see in the after effects and, and, and continually uh, increasing the downfall of this kingdom. The more you see the men of the Lord out here on the highways and byways prophesying against this kingdom, the more you see the nations going against the kingdom, and the more uh, effects you see this uh, kingdom uh, crumbling at an uh, uh, increasing alarming rate, slowly but surely, and you're going to see more effects of that, you know, because we are in those times. These are the signs of the times now, so more than ever, you know. Now I'm going to uh, switch up the spirit and get into the uh, Revelation 13 and verse 16. And this is the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 16, and it reads through the Holy Scripture. And it calls them all those fallen and great, rich and poor, free of arms, to receive a M-A-R-K, or in their F-O-R-E-H-A-D-S, 
right? Even if you're rich and poor, free above, you see that MARK, which is the upper part of your body and the right upper part of your body, even if you're upper class, middle class, or lower class, even if you're rich and poor, free above, you see that MARK uh, soon to come, which is that corrupt central digital bank currency, uh, the new form of way of uh, currency, you know, as we continue to see the American dollar uh, crumble, even though it still has value. But soon, as we're getting closer and closer, um, it's being fully rolled out because it's already here. But once this uh, full building of this MARK be fully rolled out, once it comes to, to full effect, hey, this is going to be a uh, time that in order to buy your sale. And the paper dollar uh, uh, over here and around the world, particularly, is going to increase. Uh, it's going to be the paper dollar. The value of the paper dollar is going to be a thing in the past as we move forward to this century digital bank currency. Just like that article came out uh, yesterday, I did a sit down lesson on it, and I mentioned that yesterday as well too. Ukraine, with this uh, first potentially, uh, potentially uh, of this first ever uh, cashless uh, economic, first cashless economic society, and this is what we're about to enter into. You know, that's why uh, we are living out the book of Revelations now so more than ever. And this MOTV is going to be a prophecy that's about to be fulfilled very soon. You know order to buy your sale and that's what we these are the times that we're about to come into you know that's why we tell uh, the children of israel do not take that MOTB and be not part of this current uh BEAST system which is ruled by the higher ups powers that be as an example you know and i'm going to the next verse as well too uh this is the book of uh, revelation chapter 13 and verse 17 it says, and that no man might buy or sell, say he had the M-A-R-K, which is that garage was soon to come. Once it's rolled out, it's already here, but once it rolls out and comes to full effect, this is going to be a time uh, in order to buy or sell, in order to be part of this current uh, system, you know, of this current BEASD system. And that M-A-R-K, this is a uh, prophecy that's about to be fulfilled very soon, slowly for sure. It says, or the name of the BEASD, which is this current system, or the number of the name. Right, in order to buy your sale, hey, you gotta have that technology stored in you, that CHIP, that MARK. It's a rock, the central digital bank currency, a cashless society. As we move into the central digital bank currency, right along with the Fed now, that's coming uh, within the next week or so, you know, uh, next uh, a, a week and a couple of days that we are gonna see this Fed now and take the full effect as well, too, you know. And that, deal, that deals with finance, uh, buying and selling. Track your every move and stuff like that. Love uh, you have this technology stored in your body. And this is what we're about to enter into, you know. Uh, but continuing on, this is uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. Here is wisdom that we have understanding, count the number of the EPA as to this current system. For it is a number of a man, and his number is SIX 300 for school. video short because you know I have to uh, get to the, get to the prayer of the Lord early but I'm uh bring a couple more precepts and then I'm gonna close it out a little bit early uh so lock it for that my apology but uh in the but in the meantime I'm gonna bring out uh, uh let's see oh yeah bring out the second address 15 or verse 16 and this is the book of uh, Second Ezra, chapter fifteen, and verse sixteen. And we're going to see this increase in the latter latter days as well too by the scriptures that I'm about to bring out. And this is a uh, Second Ezra, chapter fifteen, and I'm starting at verse fourteen. Woe unto the world and them that dwell therein. Verse fifteen, Second Ezra, fifteen, and verse fifteen. It says, For the sword and the destruction draw the time, and one people shall stand up and fight against one another with swords in their hands. Right, that's what we're seeing over there in Israel, Israel, Palestine situation. That's what we're seeing down there in Sudan. <coughs> you know, uh, it was a uh, story that just came out over there in Canada, you know, over this alphabet lifestyle stuff. Uh, it was this student, he was a former university student, I believe he was like in his early 20s or whatever. You know, he had uh, when he sat in the uh, classroom, they had like some type of philosophy, 201 class or whatever. Because I didn't sit down and lesson on that earlier today. And so he uh, went inside the uh, school and he went inside the uh, philosophy class 201 over there in Canada. 
he was actually the teacher was the female teacher was she was a uh, student, you know, because they was uh, talking about gen gender equality, gender equality, and that gender alphabet lifestyle as well too. Hey, he went and said that uh, I think he had a knife on him, and he was asking the teacher was she, was she was the teacher. She, she responded yes. So he went and sat in there, and he just automatically stabbed the teacher a couple of times, stabbed other two students as well too. You know. A, uh, Ecclesiasticus 39 and 28, which is the book of so rock 39 and 28. There are these spirits that are ready for vengeance, you know. Hey, that, that's seditions and uprises and upwards of the people of the world. Hey, Matthew's 24 and 12, because iniquity shall abound in the name of Christ's code. Second Timothy 3 and 1, also in the latter days, various times to come. Hey, those are prime examples that we want to continue to see and, and witness and experience in the latter days, you know. It says, uh, Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 15. Through the holy scriptures and it reads of the apocryphal books so you know that was just prime example you know hey it, it's going to be a, a, a lot of wax cold spirits out here in a lot of days even if, if it's over here in babylon but around the world as well too so that that uh sedition and uprising and this vengeful vengeful spirit of your house is going to put on these people in a lot of days hey and, and iniquities all this this love of many are wax and cold Hey, the love of many is gonna wax cold. The, the love people used to have towards one another at a, a, a good, solid, normal break, hey, it's gonna wax cold in a lot of days, you know, because we are in those signs, we are in those times. These are the signs of the times that we are in, you know. But I'm gonna uh, continue on. Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 15, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures of the Apocryphal books. Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 15. For the sword and that destruction draw of nine, and one people should stand up and fight against another with swords in their hands. Yeah, that's gonna happen, you know. Uh, next verse, second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 16 of the apocryphal books of the Holy Scriptures and it reads, For there shall be sedition among men and baby one another. It says, uh, and they shall not regard their kings or their princes, and the course of their actions should stand in their power. Right, we're gonna see that a lot. We're gonna see that right. Increase at an alarming rate. I mean, at an uh, alarming rate, like I'm mentioning uh, again previously. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 16, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. It says, For there shall be sedition among men, invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor their princes, and the course of their actions should stand in their power. Just like over there in Myanmar, they had the uh, protest going on and uh, uh, anti coups from uh, 2021 all the way to 2023. They did a latest uh, missile airstrike over there, you know. They've been having uh, clashes and uh, submissions and uprisings. Those are prime examples that we are going to continue to see, you know, especially in, uh, previously here in the year 2023, in previous years, in current times that we are in as well, too. We're going to see that brand going to increase in as well, too. So they should not regard their kings or their princes in the course of their actions should stand in that power. And one people should rise up and stand against one another fight against one another with swords in their hands. We're going to see that increase and show forth now so more than ever, you know. And these are according to the Holy Scriptures, not according to my understanding, but according to the Holy Scriptures that we are going to see an increase now so more than ever, you know. So I'm continuing on. This is uh, Second Ezra chapter, uh, Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 17 in the words of the Holy Scriptures. A man should desire to go into a city and should not be able to. Right, that's what we're seeing up there in the Russian Ukraine situation. You have uh, current uh, little uh, mini, uh, uh, mini martial laws over there in that area, especially over there in my door as well, too, as an example, you know. And I'm going to the next verse, Second Ezra chapter 15, and verse 18, and it reads through the Holy Scripture. It says, For because of that pride, that alphabet lifestyle, hey, that, uh, that student, when he said that uh, he was a former student, he went and sat in that school and he was talking about uh, what you call that, uh, gender equality and stuff like that. Hey, the Lord put the spirit on him to uh, attack those teachers and stuff like that. Hey, those are prime examples of pride of this alphabet lifestyle. You know, because of their pride, Proverbs 16 to 8, pride go before destruction and they call the spirit they fall. Because you got two, two different types of categories of uh, pride, this alphabet lifestyle of you know, with the rainbow, of course, they totally going off. They ain't supposed to do that because that rainbow symbols of uh, that the Heavenly Father made a covenant with the earth that He's not going to flood the earth no more. 
So that's totally that blasphemy, blasphemy of what this African lifestyle has used that uh, symbol as as uh, as the African lifestyle of uh, representing uh, of what they're believing, you know. So that's totally blasphemy that's going on, you know. Hey, that's why you have Ashkenaz Shah with the uh, spirit of vengeance on that uh, that person that did that over in Canada, you know, at those uh, recent stops over there. As I did sit down and listen to that as well too. I'm going to read it again, 2nd Edges, chapter 15, and verse 18 of the Apocrypha books of the Holy Scriptures, and it reads, And for because of their pride, and the city shall be troubled, and the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid, right? And men shall be afraid in those times, you know? Hey, the seditions and uprisings and uproars of the people world, you know? I see the little heaven. I see some heavenly uh, Edomite couples that was right here. They didn't want, they didn't want to hear the word of Yahweh Hashanah Shah. Just like it says, uh, Hebrews 4 and 12, uh, it says the uh, words of Yahweh is powerful and strong and then the tool, two edged sword, you know? So that was our prime examples right there, you know? Because the people of the world, they want to hear something that's good, 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 and not, not bad, bad, bad all the time, you know? It's not coming from mind, you understand? It's coming from the words of Yahweh Shemel Shah. Okay, Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the life, I create darkness, I create peace. I, the Lord, does all these things. Hey, Yahweh Shemel does all these things. What are these people like? What are these people don't like the, the words of Yahweh Shemel Shah, even if it's good or bad, right? Rather than if they're, they're here or for here, you know? This word ain't, this word, this, uh, the words of Yahweh Shemel Shah doesn't apply to these other nations or any other way, you know? But, you know, I just want to say that for an example. Uh, I guess this word must have cut these uh, elderly, elderly Edomites that was uh, up right here, you know, <coughs> looking, after the, looking after this little water fountain stuff of this little Edomite angel and stuff like that, you know. But, hey, they had they had to uh, walk up the block, you know, because they didn't want to hear this word, you know, whether if it's good or bad, you know. But they want to hear good things all the time, you know. But sometimes this ain't going to be good things all the time, you know. Because Heavenly Father, he's a just balance. Just like it says in Exodus 15 to 3, hey, the Lord, he's a man of war. He's going to uh, stop because he's going to uh, he uh, strive for, uh, for attention and seditions and uprise. Hey, Yahweh Shemel Shah is going to do this, and he's going to continue to stir that up in a lot of days. Why do these, why do these uh, people don't like the message of the word of Yahweh Shemel Shah or how the way we teach or how we uh, preach, you know? So, hey. Hey, the words of Yahweh Hashemel Shai is going to be bitter. Hey, these scriptures uh, cut, cut them. Because the words of Yahweh Hashemel Shai is uh, powerful than a two-edged sword. And that's in Hebrews 4 and 12, you know. Whether they like it or not, hey, whether they hear it for good, you know. That goes to our nation, other respectable twin tribes, or these other nations, you know. Because it's not going to be, these words are not going to be uh, good all the time. It's going to be bitter as well, too. That's how Yahweh Hashemel Shai rose, you know. Whether they like it or not, whether they hear it from here, hey, it is what it is, you know. I'm going to continue on. But I'm going to uh, continue on. Uh, Salaki, my apologies. Right, it says, uh, 2nd Ezra, chapter 15, and verse 19, and it reads through the whole scriptures. And it says, uh, And man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall restore their houses with the sword, and score their goods. Because of the lack of bread and great tribulation, right? Because of the lack of bread and great tribulation. And this is what we're about to enter into. Just like in Isaiah 19 and 2, I will set the Egyptian against the Egyptian. Hey, we're going to see that uh, increase in the latter days, you know. Because Yahweh Shemel Shai is going to set the Egyptian against the Egyptian, just like in those ancient times, now in modern day times, he's going to set the Egyptian against the Egyptians. Uh, Babylonians versus the Babylonians, the Egyptians versus the Egyptians. Hey, we're going to see that increase in, uh, in the latter days and modern day times. Should have no pity upon his neighbors, right? Uh, neighbors within their own nation of these other nations, outside of their nation, you know, the inner circle of their nation, outside of their nation, a brother against brother, neighbor against neighbor, city against city, kingdom against kingdom. They want to see that stir up and increase in a lot of days. We seeing signs of that, but once that comes into full effect and it's going to rise up and increase, so that shows you that we're definitely living in those times, you know. And we're getting closer and closer to living, living those times, you know. Like I said again, hey, rather the people hear it for beer, it is what it is. Hey, but the words is are going to be uh, the words of Yahweh Shemel Shah. Hey, we're going to continue to preach. We're going to continue to prophesy. 
out here on the highways and byways, whether people are like it or not, you know. Uh, once that scripture says they love to hear uh, smooth words and stuff like that, but once they hear the bitterness of the scriptures of your high Shem El Shaf, hey, 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 they, uh, they leave, you know. That goes to our own nation of people and these other nations, you know, whether they hear with fear, whether they, whether they don't like it rough or not, you know, whether they like it uh, regular or uh, uh, sweet, hey, it is what it is, you know. You know? Right, cause, cause, hey, cause the characteristics of the Heavenly Father, he was a, uh, the Heavenly Father, the album is on the God's Son, you know, they was all austere men, you know, they wasn't no, you know, they wasn't no soft men, you know, they was, uh, they was, they was, they was hardcore 100% warriors, you know, of course.